What's up, Space Pirates? This is your captain, the sinfully stellar Dr. Disaster, and in a move that is clearly a show of desperate weakness, Rotten Tomatoes has hidden the audience score from Disney Star Wars shows in order to protect the Acolyte. Erased from existence. Now, apparently, hiding the scores wasn't just for the Acolyte, it was for the entire catalog of Disney Star Wars, from Ahsoka to Andor to Obi-Wan. I read about this on Twitter, and in all fairness, by the time I was able to personally research this myself, the scores were able to be viewed as normal. So really, I have only two questions. Why bother restoring the audience scores on Rotten Tomatoes? It's not like Disney and Rotten Tomatoes can actually restore their virtue. And question number two, what took you idiots at Rotten Tomatoes and Disney so long to do this? I mean, we knew this wasn't beneath you. And frankly, it's the obvious solution, because letting people speak their opinions on the matter, letting folks tell the world what they think of your stupid show, that is going to cost you money, and that is embarrassing as hell. Alright me hearties, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter where my handle is DrDisaster1. But anyhow, as we covered yesterday, the viewership on this terribly written piece of shit has been dropping like a rock. The Acolyte is an abject failure at this point. Disney and their shills in the media have attempted to push back on reality, obfuscating the truth by using completely nebulous metrics to claim this is one of the most successful shows of all time on Disney+. Plus. But I call bullshit. As I said yesterday, we can see the numbers plain as day. The viewership numbers are right there for everyone to witness, and this show is the worst live-action Star Wars in terms of viewership performance ever. You're pathetic. <laughs> this is clearly embarrassing for Lucasfilm. By now, I think it's fair to say that Kathleen Kennedy and her acolytes at Lucasfilm are fairly obsessed with image. She and Disney constantly have the mainstream media run interference for her studio. Keep in mind, they never seem concerned with the opinion of the lowly Star Wars fans, because of course, she and most everyone else that she has hired at the studio aren't really all that into the franchise. They're interested in what the so-called upper crust think about them. They still want to get invited to the big parties, and they want articles written about their brilliance and all that other glamorous crap. But what they can't have, what they cannot tolerate, is a bunch of nerds telling them how stupid they are on a platform like Rotten Tomatoes. How dare you, you insolent peasant! These uppity awfuls, and for those who don't know, AWFUL is an acronym standing for Affluent White Female Liberals, but these AWFULs cannot stand to be criticized by the likes of the plebs, so naturally they had to do something, anything they could to hide this black eye on their reputation. As I said before, I'm just surprised they waited this long to do it. I'm surprised they restored the scores and that they didn't erase the Acolyte audience score entirely. 
I mean, at this point, who cares? It's not like the criticism will get any worse. They're already at rock bottom. They are exposed as propagandists and cowards of the highest order. They might as well go the whole nine yards. Why not try to scrub the score from the internet and hope that people forget about it? But strategically speaking, these people aren't very bright. They think they are. They believe that they are a whole lot smarter than all of us. They still think that they can get by with saying and doing the most blatantly ridiculous shit ever. Apparently, they aren't all that acquainted, however, with this little thing called the internet. What the f*** is the internet? But oh well, let them try to run from the criticism. Everyone can see the show is a massive fail. I mean, this isn't exactly a move born out of a position of strength, is it? But let them flee as much as they want. They continuously remove our ability to voice dissent, such as removing the dislike numbers showing up on YouTube, and of course now this stuff with Rotten Tomatoes, but we keep finding new and innovative ways to communicate our dissent. The more you tighten your grip, Tarkin, the more star systems will slip through your fingers. That quote is so apt to what's going on here, and it's like these idiots at Disney and Lucasfilm have never watched their own franchise. Oh wait, they probably haven't watched it outside of doing research for their writing gigs, because I seriously doubt they are anything like us. I don't know about y'all, but I conservatively estimate that I have watched the original three Star Wars films about somewhere between 50 and 100 times. I have likely seen the prequels well over 30 times, even The Phantom Menace, and I hope that I watch these movies at least that many times again before I'm done on this earth because I love them so much. And I'll keep reading the books like Timothy Zahn's Heir to the Empire series and playing the video games like KOTOR or the OG Star Wars Battlefront. That is what I do because I am an absolutely massive Star Wars fan, but not people like Leslie Headland or Kathleen Kennedy. This content is just that to them. Content. It is a vehicle to be used to carry their career and nothing more. But I'm going to leave it there. How many times have you watched the Star Wars movies? Not the Disney fan fiction crap, but the actual Star Wars films crafted by George Lucas. And do you think someone who makes a Star Wars show or film should have to have watched them a certain number of times of their own volition? Drop your thoughts in the comment section below and we will talk there. Thanks for watching me hearties. If you haven't already, your captain is inviting you to subscribe to the channel and become a part of the crew. Life as a space pirate may not be glamorous, but there's always plenty of 